Hey there, it's Pastor Rick once again with another installment of In the Car with PR, a video devotional by the Ark Church in Pickerington, Ohio. And as I leave uh, Pickerington, Ohio this morning, I uh, thought I would pause for a few moments to talk a little bit about self-evaluation. Self-evaluation, very, very important topic for the Christian because uh, we are called to maturity. Uh, the Bible encourages us to move beyond, uh, you know, our infancy uh, with Christ and to, to pursue spiritual maturity. In fact, Paul says, you know, he works very hard. He said we should put in time and effort uh, becoming spiritually fit. In other words, growing in spiritual maturity. Uh, from the time we start our Christian walk, God loves us just the way we are. He does. He could never love us more or less. He loves us just the way we are. However, he loves us too much to allow us to stay that way. He wants us to go on uh, from the, the elementary teachings about Christ, and he wants us to move on to maturity so that we can be happier, healthier uh, people, so that we can be more active in ministry so that we can be more successful in carrying out the endeavors, the uh, agenda that he has for our lives. And today I want to I want to draw our attention to Romans chapter 12, verse 3. The Bible talks about, you know, the fact that we need to evaluate once in a while. We need to stop and we need to consider where we are. That's how we grow. Uh, a lot of times we just want to turn a blind eye to all of our mistakes. We want to make excuses for how we behave. We want to, you know, just, just push off till tomorrow dealing with who we are. But the Bible gives us, you know, different instructions. It says, you know, we ought to stop and, and consider who we are. We ought to, you know, sort of to go back to, uh, and I, I realize this is a financial thing, but uh, to know the state of our flocks. You know, we not only want to know where our finances are, but we want to know where we are spiritually, where we are emotionally, where we are intellectually, so we can grow. And Romans 12, 3 says, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think of, uh, uh, don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Now, this is a really an interesting passage here. First, he says, don't think you're better than you really are. You know, that's how we get into trouble. Uh, a lot of times we want to look down our noses at everybody else. And uh, Jesus warns us, he said, hey, be careful. You know, don't try to pull the speck out of your neighbor's eye when you've got a plank in your own eye. He says, you want to have a sane evaluation of yourself. And we tend to, to sort of skew our evaluation when it comes to us and other people because we look at other people and we evaluate them based on their actions. But we evaluate ourselves on our desires, on our the way we think, uh, the way we want to be, our aspirations. Uh, in other words, we look at another person and we see a lack of loving actions, you know, they might feel a ton of love for other people, but if they don't do anything, we say, well, they're not very loving, but yet we evaluate ourselves on our intentions, on what we would like to be, our aspirations, and so we want to love people, so we evaluate ourselves and say we're loving, even though we're not showing any more fruit than they are, and that's the way we tend to be, and so Paul is reminding us here, we need to have a, a sane estimate of ourselves. we need to to not think of ourselves better than we should. Why? Because it causes pride and it ruins relationships. And it keeps us from growing. If we're if we're walking around evaluating ourselves based on, you know, the way we typically do, we're always going to say, well, you know, I may not be Jesus, but at least I'm better than these people. And we compare. And we shouldn't compare. The second part of this is he says, be honest in your evaluation of, of yourself, measuring yourself by the faith God has given you. Now, why would he do that? Why would he base everything on faith? Why would it come down to that? In other words, of all the things that I can measure, why would I want to measure my faith? Well, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, 
uh, we talked about how faith really is, you know, it's everything. It, it determines how much God can do in our life. And, and I guess that's really hitting the nail on the head right there. Uh, our faith determines what God can do through us. If we have little faith, then God can't do much through us. Just like Jesus said, I went home to my hometown and I could do but a few miracles there because of their lack of faith. If we don't have faith, God can't do much through us. We won't step out. We won't take risks. We won't believe him for, for bigger and, and better things. We won't believe that he can do great things things, the even greater things that Jesus talked about, we won't be able to do those things. I mean, literally, we are dead in the water without faith. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews, we, it is impossible to please God without faith. And so, really, it kind of all comes back to our faith. And he says, you want to evaluate how much faith you have. Because if you have a lot of faith, if you can, if you, if you can believe God for great things, if you trust him, and you believe that what he says in his word is true. And you're willing to take risks of faith based on his promises. And you are willing to, to trust him no matter where he takes you. Even when he doesn't give you the full instruction. Even when he says, you know, like he did to Abraham, pack up everything, sell what you got and go. And I'm going to lead you to a land that, you know, that you will eventually start a new nation. And he's like, well, where are we going? Don't worry about it. I'll tell you later. Uh, why are we going? Uh, I'll give you the details later. You just pack up and go. And, you know, Abraham left. And the Hebrew says that, you know, God attributed that as faith. Okay? It, it was faith because he moved out when he had no idea what to expect. And sometimes the Holy Spirit just doesn't give us all the input. He says, you know, go do this. And you're thinking, why? Go talk to this person. When? Why? What am I supposed to talk about? Don't worry about it. You'll know when you get there. If we're willing to trust the Holy Spirit's leadership in those kind of ways, then God can do great things. He can do amazing things. He can do the even greater things. Today, as you're in your quiet time, and you're just uh, you know sitting and meditating before God, I want you to, to stop and pause and evaluate your faith. Do you see real faith in your life? You know, how do you know if you're if you have faith? Well, you start with the obvious. Do you give 10% of your income as your tithe? You know, every every week, every time you get paid, do you give a tenth, the first tenth of everything you make to the Lord? If the answer is no, or if you haven't worked your way up to 10% yet and you're still at five or six, well your evaluation of faith is going to be a little lower because you're not you're you're not trusting God for uh, to meet your needs you're not trusting him with what you know doing what he says and trusting that he will give you what you need to, to meet meet your bills um, other areas you know how much how much prayer time do you spend uh, how much time do you spend in prayer rather every day uh, on your knees you know in your prayer closet in your car praying, you know, whatever, how much time do you, you know, quote unquote, waste praying? Uh, that tells us a lot about our faith because we're not going to waste a lot of time praying if we truly don't believe that God is going to answer those prayers. Uh, only a true person of faith is going to take, you know, a good portion of their day and, and, and spend it in prayer to God. Um, other things that you can look at, you know, what about risks of faith? Um, how many times do you hear from the Holy Spirit um, and he's leading you to do something and you're not really sure why, but you just step out and do it anyway? That's an issue of faith. Um, how many times do you step out and take risks to do something really, you know, really big? In other words... You know, you, you see somebody who literally is crippled or blind or whatever, and you feel, you know, led to pray for them, and you step out and have faith to pray. You say, well, that's huge. Well, yeah, Jesus said, those who believe and are baptized 
these signs will accompany them. Accompany them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. Do you do those things? Do you assume that God will that He will follow through? You know, look at your prayer life. Do you pray for small things or big or big things, and do you expect them to happen? Remember. Your faith determines what God can do in you and through you. If your faith is minimal, God can do very little, and you're not going to see those even greater things in your life. If your faith is huge, God can do amazing things. Today, start stretching your faith. Look for ways to stretch your faith. Look for ways to take risks of faith. Look for ways to say, God, I trust you. And as you do this and your faith muscles grow, God will use you in even greater ways. This is Pastor Rick signing off for now. Have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless. We'll see you next time.